and the next revision that we are taking up is in relation to chapter number 8 that is called audit report chapter theek okay? hai very nice chapter very easy chapter a uh, chapter which has a uh, proper segregation segregation important kyu hai because if proper segregation is there in place then it is easy for you to remember ki kiska answer kya hai theek okay? hai so let's go ahead with the revision of this chapter okay so let's go for it please see here let's understand now first of all we are going to enter the standards that is your 700 you have 701705706 and 710 these are the standards which are there in this chapter after we complete standards we'll do the two separate topics that are there in this chapter now in the new course you have the joint audit part and you have the branch audit part theek okay? hai joint audit bhi hai branch audit bhi hai again two very easy areas and after this we'll be doing the last area that is in relation to caro so you have caro 2000 20 which is there okay so we'll be covering this area so step by step karte ekdam acche se and so that you are also getting a proper grip regarding this chapter number 8 chalo dekhte hain yahan pe pehle first we'll enter the quick recap point in relation to sa 706 pehle kar lete hain so we'll do the smaller ones first what is sa 706 fsa 706 is nothing but emphasis of matter paragraph and other matter paragraph now whenever the management has prepared the final statements properly मैनेजमेंट की यहाँ पे कोई भी गलती नहीं है मैनेजमेंट हैज गिवन द फाइनेंशियल इन अ प्रॉपर मैनर बट बट द ऑल्टर इज ऑफ द ओपिनियन दैट इट इज फंडामेंटल टू द यूजर्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग टू हाईलाइट सम पॉइंट दैट द मैनेजमेंट हैज गिवन इन द नोट्स टू अकाउंट्स तो अगर यहाँ पे ऑल्टर को कुछ हाईलाइट करना है रिगार्डिंग द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट के बारे में अगर ऑल्टर को कुछ हाईलाइट करना है यहाँ पे देन द ऑल्टर विल गिव द हाईलाइट एज पर योर एस एस सेवन जीरो पैराग्राफ कॉल्ड एज एम्फोसिस ऑफ मैटर पैराग्राफ second if the auditor wants to highlight to the shareholder something in relation to the auditor's work that is auditor's report auditor's responsibilities or the audit okay in that case the auditor will highlight using something called as other matter paragraph remember 706 will only come only come if that matter that particular matter is not covered in modified opinion and that particular matter is not covered in the key audit matter paragraph agar koi matter yahan pe 705 matlab modified opinion hai ya to fir agar wo matter sorry for that one second agar koi matter yahan pe 705 ke under covered ho raha hai ya to 701 ke under cover ho raha hai then that matter cannot be a 706 matter cannot be a 706 matter simple you have to keep this in mind okay now 706 ka other matters also there which i'll explain to you when we do the answer one by one but this is the brief concept what is 705 now 705 is modified opinion whenever the auditor is giving a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion if he has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and if he has not obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence then the auditor will give a qualified opinion if the matter is if the possibility of material misstatement is there and the matter seems to be seems That it is not pervasive, the auditor will give a qualified opinion. And if the auditor has not obtained the audit evidence, and the matter, the auditor is is guessing that material misstatement can be there, and if he feels it is pervasive, then the auditor will give a disclaimer of opinion. So whenever the auditor gives qualified report or an adverse report after obtaining the audit evidence, or if the auditor has not obtained audit evidence and the auditor is giving a qualified opinion or a disclaimer of opinion, we call it as a modified opinion or a 705 matter. Okay, what is seven zero six seven zero one? Sorry, seven zero one is called key audit matter. So out of the communication that you have done to the TCLOG throughout the year, out of those matters, which are the MSM that is most significant matters that we discuss with TCLOG, when you collect it at one place and show it to the shareholders, when you collect it at one place and show it to the shareholders, that matter is called key audit matters and it is covered in the key audit matter paragraph. Okay. Next is SA seven hundred. Seven hundred is the audit report format. The format that the auditor follows, and seven one zero is a very nice standard, very important standard. That is comparative information, corresponding figures, and comparative financial statements. Okay, it is covered in this manner. That is your seven hundred, seven zero one, seven zero five, seven zero six, and seven one zero in a gist what it is. Okay. Now let's go for it one by one. Now we'll go in the order of seven hundred first. Okay. Now seven hundred is what? One second. Okay, in seven hundred, the auditor is the auditor is forming an opinion. The auditor is forming an opinion, and the auditor is giving his opinion through a written report. The auditor is giving his opinion through a written report. Okay, so that is the objective of say seven hundred. Next, I have said here that the auditor here 
shall form an opinion whether it is whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects and as per the applicable financial reporting framework next i have said here that evaluation by the auditor what all should the auditor evaluate auditor will be evaluated the financial statements are prepared as per afrf whether quality aspects of the entity uh, in relation to the accounting practices and if there is any possibility of management bias in the management judgments that is what the auditor will check auditor will also give is do specific evaluations for this there is a code called paid term a uh, very simple first p is whether the presentation or the financial statements is is cure cure is what comparable understandable relevant and reliable after that you have whether the accounting policies are adequately disclosed whether accounting policies are consistent or not and whether accounting estimates are reasonable or not that is what the auditor is checking here auditor will also see whether there is adequate disclosures uh, to enable the intended users uh, to understand the effect of material transaction and events on the information conveyed finally the auditor will use you should check whether the management has used the proper terminologies in the financial statement you cannot call cash flow statements as a uh, cash in cash out statement for that cash flow statement is a proper name so the name that the company should also use is cash flow statement also company cannot call balance sheet as list of balances statement no the name is properly balance sheet you should call it as balance sheet only that is basically called terminology used so auditor will check that simple that is in relation to what specific evaluations by the auditor let's go further now we understood this matter that is general purpose financial framework and uh, your a uh, compliance framework so what is the difference between these two so first is general purpose financial framework general purpose framework which is basically your fair presentation framework okay fair presentation framework basically means uh, there is a there is a benchmark based on that you are making the financial statement a simple example can be you are making the financial statement in accordance with indian accounting standards or schedule 3 so you are basically making the financial statement as per afrf so whether it is properly made as per afrf that is called fair presentation framework okay so you are comparing your financial statement with the fair presentation framework that is your afrf and comparing whether it is proper or not so you have something to compare with now what is compliance framework means compliance framework means a client has given you some work and the client has given you some format and the client is telling you please ensure that the uh please just compare whether in our organization everything is as per our policy or not of the things that we have framed framed here that is called as compliance framework in this case okay so compliance framework does not contain any uh, what do you call um any comparison with something that is already as per the law it is as per some contract that you are getting the work that is called compliance framework okay now let's go to the next part that is in relation to forming of opinion opinion can be unmodified as you know that as a clean report or it can be modified opinion also modified opinion as you know very well after reaching the r level you feel that material misstatement is there or if you are not able to reach the r level and you are not in a position to comment whether the financial statements are free from material misstatement that both these are modified opinion modified opinion as you know is nothing but 705 and 705 as you know contains four statements one of these four uh, statements or reply if you give in the auditor's report these are called modified opinion those are qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer opinion and qualified opinion when you are not reached the uh, ra level basically okay let's go further now this is the audit report format you have title then you have addressee then you have opinion paragraph okay opinion paragraph then you have the basis for opinion here then you have the going concern paragraph here after that you have the key audit matter paragraph then after that in key audit matter you have you know different areas which are there in place already okay so that we'll see then after that you have the next area that is in relation to uh the auditor responsibilities in the auditor's report so what all is the auditor concerned with so regarding that also we have seen then after that you have the next last you know simple areas in relation to the location of the description of the auditor responsibilities the date of the audit report the place of the audit report the signature of the auditor's report all these things the auditor will check okay so you have the signature of the auditor auditor's address that is a place of signature and the date of the auditor's report that all the auditor should that all we have to give in the in the audit report that is say 700 after that you have the next area that is in relation to i say 705 we'll do it in the flow of this flow which is here 705 that told you is modified opinion whenever the auditor gives a qualified or an adverse opinion or a qualified or a disclaimer of opinion the auditor is giving a modified opinion in i think in this we have discussed fairly all the things properly i'll just uh, point out some key area to you you remember what is pervasive so it will appear on your screen now see pervasive pervasive means you have to remember a code called dins dins so you will see in the lower half of whatever you can see on the screen you can see there first 
disclosures which are fundamental to the user's understanding if those are missing then the auditor will say that it is pervasive that it means it is it is a big problematic issue second is if the misstatements of the company are not confined to a specific element account or item then the auditor will, auditor will say it is pervasive in nature even if they are confined if the auditor feels that a substantial proportion of the financial statement is affected then the auditor will say that it is pervasive okay Next, we have this point called disclaimer of opinion. In disclaimer of opinion, we say the auditor shall disclaim an opinion when the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence on which to base his opinion. And the auditor will, of course, if the auditor feels that the possibility of the misstatement is material as well as it is pervasive, the auditor will give a disclaimer of opinion. So this, I think we have done it many times. Now, which type of opinion is appropriate? Now, auditor will decide this on two things. I've, I've given, given, given that in yellow there. When the matter is materially misstated and based on pervasiveness, the auditor's opinion will change. Okay, this table we have already seen. You can see on the table on the right hand side qualified opinion, adverse opinion, qualified opinion, and disclaimer of opinion. Also, remember whenever the auditor is giving a report as per 705, the basis for opinion paragraph will change to basis for qualified opinion, or basis for adverse opinion, or basis for disclaimer of opinion as, as per the situation, as per the report that the auditor is giving. Okay. Uh, let's go to now 706, that is emphasis of matter paragraph and other matter paragraph, okay? As I told you, emphasis of matter paragraph, our main focus is on the uh, financial statement, financial statement, and in your other matter paragraph, it is other than those present or disclosed in the financial statement, so other than those. Other than those means what? Anything in relation to audit, auditor responsibilities, or auditor report. That is what the auditor will give. Now, inside this, there are a few, lot of small answers. So first is emphasis on matter paragraph. You will not give, the auditor will not provide the emphasis on matter paragraph where it is already a modified opinion or where 701, that is key audit matter applies. So only when it is not a modified opinion and it is not determined as a key audit matter, only then emphasis of matter paragraph will come, will come. Okay, so only when 705 is not applicable, 701 is not applicable, 706 will come, 706 that is emphasis of matter paragraph will come in this case, okay. Next, sir, emphasis of matter paragraph will have a separate heading called emphasis of matter. If you remember in the class, I had shown you the reliance report, which had emphasis of matter. There, we are giving clear reference to the matter being emphasized in the reliance report. You had something called as note number 31B and note number 41.1. And finally, the auditor's opinion is not modified in respect of the matter emphasized. Okay. So these three things should be are the main key areas for the uh, emphasis of matter paragraph. Okay. Disclosures. Let's go further. Circumstances where emphasis of matter paragraph will be given, and you have to frame your own examples. These examples you can go through. This we are done in the class. But the key point you have to remember is that see. The main framework is company has disclosed something properly. So there is no material misstatement. So see no material misstatement, but auditor wants to highlight it for the users of the financial statements. And for that, the auditor is using the emphasis of matter paragraph and it is related to the financial statement. Only then EOM paragraph will come. Okay. That is what the auditor is doing in this case. Okay. Let's go further. Now other matter paragraph will uh, come only in which case it should not be prohibited by law or regulation and it should not be a key audit matter. So if 701 is there, 706 in the case of other matter paragraph will not come, okay? Next, I have given here C, the auditor will give the heading as other matter. And in this way, the auditor will present the other matter paragraph. Comfortable, okay? Let's go to the next one, that is SA 701, that is key audit matter paragraph. Key audit matter paragraph, as I told you, it is used to enhance the communicative value of the auditor's report by showing greater transparency about the audit that was performed. The auditor is here, uh, whatever are the important matters he discussed with the TCWG, he is uh, filtering that and only the most significant matters which were discovered TCWG, the auditor is showing in the auditor's report. Okay, let's go further. Now, uh, how do you determine the matter is a key audit matter? You will determine if there is higher risk of material misstatement. Uh, the, it is in relation to any significant event or transaction. And finally, it is in relation to uh, any high estimation uncertainty, high estimation uncertainty. As you see our code, this is more higher risk of material misstatement, higher estimation uncertainty is there and significant transaction and events are related to this. Okay. Only then the auditor will show it as a key audit matter. Okay. Last but not the least, you have the answer which has a code called MoDG. That is, communicating key audit matters in the auditor's report is not a, is not a, 
a substitute for giving a modified opinion. It is uh, not a separate report on individual matters. It is not a substitute for disclosures. And finally, a report for report, uh, the substitute, it is not a substitute for reporting matters regarding going concern. That is, I say, 570. That is basically covered in this part. Okay. That completes your four standards which are covered till now. That is uh, 700, 701, 705, and 706. Okay. Uh, before entering the next standard and joint audit and branch audit, what I'll request you to do is just go through these four standards first. Go through it once. And we'll call this as part one. Go through it properly. Any queries, ask me. Then after that, we'll continue with uh, 710 and uh, joint audit, branch audit, and Caro separately I'll give. Caro, because a separate video is already given for Caro revision. What I'll do is Caro revision, I'll put the link in the description below. So that Caro revision, you can do it separately. Okay, so Caro revision, you can easily do it in a separate manner. Okay, I'll share the link with you. Okay, please go through this. Please go through 700, 701, 705, 706 first. First go through this, then we'll take it up. 710 will take up.